The largest river in North America isn't the Mississippi. And when I tell you what it is, you're going to think I'm crazy. But trust me. The river I'm talking about starts in the Pacific Northwest in the rainforest of Olympic National Park, where it picks up billions of gallons of moisture. And unlike most rivers, instead of flowing downhill, this river is pumped up and over mountains, eventually ending in the east near the Appalachians. Or at least we think we actually don't know because this river isn't only invisible, it's in the sky. What I'm talking about is a relatively new theory proposed by scientists that claim forests, especially rainforests, create their own rain and even wind to draw in moisture from the ocean and bring it to the trees. Most of the information we have is about the Amazon rainforest in South America, but scientists believe that these temperate rainforests of the Pacific Northwest could act much in the same way, drawing in as much as 40 billion gallons of water to dump here in these forests. Everyone knows trees pull up water from their roots, but how? Trees don't have lungs that can suck air up through a straw. Instead, they use the power of evaporation. During photosynthesis, small pores open up in the leaves of the trees that allow water to evaporate. As the water evaporates, it creates a vacuum that pulls up water from the ground to the top of the tree. But evaporation means that some of the tree's water is lost to the atmosphere in the form of water vapor, which is why in very humid climates, you can actually see mist forming around the tops of the trees. Large trees like this Douglas fir can release up to a thousand liters of water per day. Multiply that by all the trees here in the Pacific Northwest, and you're talking about nearly 170 million tons of water. That's the equivalent of about 46,000 Olympic swimming pools, or 27 times the water that flows through the Mississippi in a day. But water vapor isn't rain. Even in extremely dry climates, there are trillions and trillions of water molecules floating around the air. Those molecules can only form into rain droplets if they have something to cling to, some type of impurity in the air like dust, salt, chemicals, or even pollen. As molecules start to cling to these impurities, water droplets form, which attract more molecules until the droplet is heavy enough to fall. It's called weather modification, or cloud seeding. Because rain needs these impurities to form, some scientists have even started trying to seed rain by pumping impurities into the air when moisture is high. This gives the molecules something to cling to and form water droplets, hopefully promoting rain where it might not fall otherwise. But rainforests do this naturally. When the tree's pores open up during photosynthesis, trees release chemicals known as biogenic volatile organic compounds that act as super efficient rain seeds. As more and more water water molecules attached to these rain seeds, clouds are formed, creating low pressure system that will then draw more moisture in from the ocean, creating this invisible river rain in the sky that can only be seen using weather radar. Hey, real quick, just one dollar. That is all it takes to get a vital piece of outdoor gear. For the past three years, I've been paying $100 a year to unlock the elite features of Onyx Backcountry, the market's leading GPS app. I've been paying $100 a year, but right now you can unlock the premium subscription for three months for just $1 or unlock the elite subscription for just $3. In fact, I've post hold up here to the lingering snowpack to tell you about this exciting new partnership between me and Onyx because this is one of the coolest features they offer. Soon all the snow will be gone, but until then, it's really helpful to be able to look and see where snow might be lingering in the high country. With the $3 Elite subscription, you can access recent satellite imagery updated every one to two weeks to see where the snow might be lingering. Or check on recent flooding, fire damage, or just use it to see how many miles your hike is going to be. But seriously, this deal is not going to last long. For a limited time, you can get three months of premium service for just one dollar or you can get three months of elite service for just three dollars and do me a favor since this is a new partnership for me it'd be really helpful if you could fill out the checkout survey at the end of the purchase and let them know you heard about it from me that is by far the best thing you can do to support this channel now back to rainforests making rain 
you probably remember the water cycle diagram from grade school that teaches water evaporates over the ocean, condenses in the clouds over land, falls as precipitation, and then flows back to the ocean to start the whole journey over again. But that is only part of the story. Scientists now believe that rainforests act as a biotic pump, actively pumping water vapor and rain seeds into the air. This does more than seed rain. As vapor condenses into water, with the help of the rain seeds, a low pressure system is created, which is the key to the whole system. Think about it like this. If I blow up this balloon, I'm creating two different pressure systems, high pressure in the balloon versus low pressure everywhere else. If I let go of that high pressure, it naturally wants to flow to the low pressure and in the process creates wind. But what's really cool is that as these trees need more rain, they will release large quantities of these rain attracting chemicals into the air. Get this gigantic biotic pump pumping fast enough and you can push that rain all the way across the continent. But there can be too much of a good thing. The air quality in sparsely populated forests tends to be really clean, but due to pollution, much of the rest of the world is seeing more impurities in the air, which you would think is great. This will make more rain, but what it actually does is spread the water molecules thin, creating more but smaller water droplets. If those droplets never get heavy enough to fall, you won't see any rain which means dry areas may see less rain even though there is more moisture in the air. And it makes forests like this all that much more important because not only do they help create rain, but they clean the air as they do it. Forests act like a gigantic broom cleaning the air of our planet. As wind blows through a forest, any particulate matter suspended in the air gets caught on the leaves and the branches of the tree. Once the rain comes, all that dirt and contamination gets washed down and deposited into the soil, leaving the air crisp and clean. It's one of the many functions forests serve to keep our planet safe, healthy, and functioning properly. And it's the reason why forests need to be protected. To find out more about how forests like this are in danger, I recommend you watch this video right here. Then be sure to like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.